HSRP is the first top redundancy protocol. And the idea behind HSRP is to provide some redundancy in case your first hop or your gateway goes down. So let's start by taking a look at the network we've got here. So this block of devices is going to be our internal network. We have a PC, we have it hooked up to a switch and to a couple of routers. And you'll see here we have some addressing going on. Now at this point, we haven't implemented first hop redundancy yet, HSRP. So PC1 is using R1 here as its default gateway, and you'll see R1's address is 192.168.1.2, R2 is 192.168.1.3. This right here is our remote network. So we're trying to get to PC2. What we want to have happen is if something happens to R1, we want to still be able to get to PC2. So that's going to require that we do first hop redundancy, which we're going to implement using HSRP. Now, what we've done, I've gone through and I've configured routing and I've configured IP addressing. And we can see how this is working. So let me go to PC1 and go to my command prompt. And I'm going to scroll down here and we'll do an IP config so you can see what we've got. Let's get a little more room here. So you can see right now we're using 192.168.1.2 as a default gateway. And if we look at this, we should be able to see how our traffic should flow. So from PC1, we're going to go to 192.168.1.2, which is our R1, which then would go over to R3 and should go to 192.168.3.6, which would then deliver it to the PC at 192.168.2.10. So if we trace route this, we can make sure that it's working. So I'm going to trace route 192.168.2.10. And we should see 1.2, 3.6, All right, so everything is working perfectly. Now, for the purposes of this demonstration, this link right here, I've actually got it set to run a little bit slower. So our traffic is going to come through here primarily. And then if for some reason this doesn't work, then we'll route traffic this way. So let's see what happens if we turn off this interface. So R1 uh, its interface is on G01. So I'm going to shut down that interface. I'm going to come to my CLI. Config T, interface G00, and shut down. So that takes down that interface, and that kind of simulates a failure, right? So this has failed. Either the router has gone down or the link's been unplugged or something like that. Now, if from PC1 I try to ping, remember we haven't set up first hop redundancy yet. So if I try to ping 192.168, let me turn on my number lock here, ping 192.168.2.10, we should get some timeouts because we don't have a way to get there because our primary device has gone down. So the only way we can restore connectivity is to bring this back up. So let's do a no shutdown. That'll bring the interface back up. And remember, the switch is going to take about 30 seconds to run its STP to make sure that we haven't looped the network. And that's all fine. We are going to actually fast forward time to skip through that. And now that that link is back up, if I go back to PC1, command prompt, and try to ping again. Now it should, there we go, start replying again. And so we're back up. All right, so that's how this works without first hop redundancy. Once the link goes down, we have to manually bring it back up. Now I want to configure first hop redundancy. We're going to use HSRP, and we're going to make it so it can go through either of these two. Now, to do that, I'm going to need a virtual IP address or a virtual default gateway. And so that's what we've identified right here, 192.168.1.1. So I'm going to go to R1, and I'm going to start my configuration here. So I'm going to go to, I'm already in interface G01, right? We'll hop back in there just so we can see it from the beginning. So from uh, our router, we're going to go to config T, interface G00, not G01. G00 is the one that's facing our local network. So for this one, we're going to start configuring HSRP. 
which remember is the hot standby router protocol. So the commands we use to do this are standby. And so I'm going to do a standby question mark, and then we'll talk about what we'll do. So standby 1 through 4095, this is the group number. And so if you've got multiple FSRP or HSRP, there we go, get the right ones. We've got multiple HSRP uh, configurations on a router, we use that to keep them separate. So we're going to do standby 1, and then, whoops, standby 1. And then once we set that, we're going to set our configuration options. So IP, preempt, priority, timers, or track. Okay, let's start with the IP. The IP is going to be the virtual IP address. So that's going to be 192.168.1.1. And that is now what we want our virtual devices or our uh, devices to start using as their gateway. So we're going to do 192.168.1.1. We're going to set the priority. Now, priority, the default priority is 100. And the idea here is you'll have multiple devices, right? And so the one with the highest priority becomes the active router. Everything else becomes the uh, duplicate router or becomes a uh, standby router. And so you can see here we've just changed status to active and we're detecting a duplicate IP address. So we're going to have to track that down. So I want to set the priority to something higher than one, so or higher than 100. So the higher priority becomes active, lower priorities become standby. And you can have multiple routers here. So you could have one at 200, one at 100, one at 50. And they would go in that order if uh, connections went down or if devices went down. So um, we're going to set the priority. So it's going to be standby one priority and I'm going to set this to 200. Now the other thing to keep in mind here is that when you're doing um, HSRP whichever device comes online first becomes active and even if a device with a higher priority comes online later it won't take over and become active and in this case we really want it to because remember we said this link right here runs slower than this link right here. So we want this to be our primary one no matter what, as long as it's active. So what we'll do is we're going to set standby 1, and the command we're looking for is preempt. And I love the way they phrase it, this overthrow lower priority active routers. So we're going to do preempt. And that means anytime this thing's online, it's going to take over. Even if the other one's active, this is one's going to take back over. Now, the other thing we want to do is we want to set our version. So we're going to do standby version 2. And that'll change it from version 2 to, or version 1 to version 2. Now, if I look at my IP addresses here, let's do show IP interface brief. You're going to see that this Ethernet. And I need to go track down and see why it's doing that. We'll find it in a minute. This uh, Ethernet is running at 1.2. So the standby address needs to be something that is different than your physical addresses. And I have a sneaking suspicion my problem is over here. So we're going to come find out. So over here, I'm going to make this one the backup router. So let me do show IP interface brief and no nope, this is 1.3 so that's fine so we're gonna go to config T interface G00 and we're gonna make this one part of standby group 1 so it's gonna be standby 1 now its priority is already 100 we're good with that but we do need to set the IP address that it's going to be using 1.1 and then we need to set standby version 2 and that's going to configure this device to be that standby router so that's our HSRP configuration which is pretty straightforward now we want to come to our PC here and our PC 
needs to be 1.10. That's where our 1.1 complaint was coming from. And we're going to set the default gateway. It was set to the IP address of R1. Now we're going to set it to that virtual IP address. And that should solve that particular problem. So now what will happen, let's go to our command prompt. And we are going to ping 192.168.1.1. And we're replying from that virtual IP address. Now remember, it's coming from that virtual IP address. And so whatever router is active is the one that's responding. If we go to R1. And do a show standby. It's going to show us we're Ethernet at zero zeros in group number one, version two. It's currently the active one. This is his virtual IP address. Preemption is enabled. The active router is the local router. And here's our standby router. 192.168.1.3, priority is 200. All right, so it's active and operational now. If we go here to R2 and do A, spread this out a little bit show oops, and show standby. We'll see that it is currently in standby mode. It's group one as well. It's got the same IP address. Preemption is disabled. It's saying this is the active or the active router is at 192.168.1.2. The standby router is local. All right, so what that means is traffic should still be flowing this way through 3.6. So let's go back here. And we're going to do a trace route to 192.168.2.10. Now, notice even though our gateway is 1.1, we got a reply back from 1.2 and then 3.6, which means traffic is flowing this direction just like it's supposed to. Now, once again, let's stop this one on R1. So we're going to go to config T, interface G00, and shut down. Now, that's simulating a failure. Remember, cable could have been disconnected, um, router could have gone down, whatever. For some reason, that first hop dropped. Now, let's come over to R2 and look and see what happens here. So, right here we see a state change. Gigabit Ethernet 00, group 1 went from standby to active. So if I do a show standby now, you'll see that this one is now active. Preemption is still disabled. Now the active router is local. We don't know if there is a uh, standby router. We just haven't got a clue. And then our routing protocol has updated for us as well. So now if I go back to PC1, remember before when I didn't have standby configured, I couldn't ping the device I'm trying to get to, 192.168.2.10. So let's try it now. So our first one times out, and now we're replying from 192.168.2.10. So even though this went down, because of HSRP, our backup router, our standby router, went active, and it is now forwarding traffic for us. In fact, if we come back over here again, let's do a trace route to 192.168.2.10. And now we're going to see it's going through 192.168.1.3, which would be this, and then it's going to 3.2, which would be here, and then over to 2.10. So that worked perfectly. Our router went down, our primary router went down, our standby router figured it out, figured out that the primary router went down, it went active, routing protocols updated, and we still have data flow in correctly. Okay, what happens when we bring this back up? Now remember, we set preemption, and preemption says, when I come back online, make me the active router again. So let's issue the command no shutdown. Now that brings us back up. It doesn't come reactive right away. We're waiting for STP, so let's fast forward. And now let's come back over to R1. And in R1, look here, we went from speak to standby, and then we went from standby to active, and that's what preemption does. And then our OSPF protocols update for us. So now if we go to PC1, 
do we still have access now that we've brought that first router back online? Let's ping 192.168.2.10. And we'll take a second for ARP to resolve. And then we are replying. But which path are we using? So let's trace route 192.168.2.10. And once again, we're going through 1.2 and then 3.6. We are following our faster route again. All right, so that's how HSRP works, what it does, and how we configure it. The configuration is really, really simple. Let's do just do a show run here so we can review the configurations real quick. So and show run. Now remember, we biggest thing that we've got to do here is we have to identify a different IP address that will be our default gateway. It's got to be different from any of our physical addresses. So these right here are the four commands that we use to set up the active router. Set the standby version, set the IP address, set the priority if you want to control the priority, and usually you do, and then set preemption if you really want that preemption, if you really care which router it goes through as the primary router. For our standby router, Let's look at that configuration real quick. Show run. And for that one, it's just two things. Set the IP address, the group in the IP address, and then version 2. And that's all it takes. We've basically used four lines of code, four on one router, two on another, or four lines of configuration, to enable first-hop redundancy using HSRP.